Hey everybody, I'm Odin, and today we're going to start a playthrough of Shadows of Forbidden Gods. And this is a game that I just recently started playing, and through a lot of trial and error and watching a lot of other people's videos, I think I've gotten to a point where I am just above terrible. And I really, really love this game, though, like already. And so I really wanted to share it in case you were unaware of it. So we're going to attempt to do a playthrough here, but there's really no telling... Uh, how long it's going to last, because I will probably fail miserably and fairly early on. So this is a strategy game where you control a dark god, and by various means, mainly by using agents, uh, you attempt to take over the world and destroy all of humanity, and uh, if that doesn't sell you right there, I don't know what will. Uh, so we're going to go to a new game, and you're first presented with the choice of the god that you will use. Now, in the beginning, you only have access to she who will feast. And I just completed a, a playthrough, uh, what was that, yesterday, and I, I won for the first time, so I believe I've unlocked these other ones. So I can show you real quickly, yes I did, so we have Yaster, I guess, the Laughing King, and each of the gods is going to have different powers associated with them, and therefore different strategies for winning. But that's one of the great things about the game, is there's tons of ways to win, uh, but also lots of ways to lose. Uh, we also have Venerva here, another of the gods that you can choose, and Ophanim, or Ophanim, the Divine Beyond, and then Mammon, the Wealth of Man, Spirit of the Mountain. This art is really cool, by the way. Uh, and then you have the Cordyceps Hive Mind. So there's actually a very large number of gods to play, and I've only used She Who Will Feast, so that's who I'm going to use this time. Also, I'm going to try to just play the game and explain what I know as we go, instead of kind of going through every little thing and then starting to play, but who knows? We'll see how it goes. All right, so your god starts off asleep, so you just operate by using the agents, but eventually your god will awake, and they, in the case of She Who Will Feast, she will appear on the map as a military unit, uh, who is very powerful. Uh, and it tells you just here briefly, you know, what the, the god is about, and how this is uh, a, a range of powers for She Who Will Feast. It's fairly balanced. Uh, and it tells you when that last seal breaks. She will emerge into the world. And it tells you that if she dies, you'll lose. Uh, so what I actually ended up doing in my previous run that I actually succeeded on, is I was getting just mauled by all these armies, and I was just running all over the map while everything else ruined the world for me. It was great. Uh, so anyway, so we'll choose her, and it gives you more specifics here. And basically, the mechanic that She Who Will Feast is all about is spreading shadow. And shadow spreads physically across the map, but it also spreads into the different characters, which are generally known as heroes, But and there's rulers too. And the way it is done is your agents are called, essentially, I guess, agents, and then the heroes are your opposition. Um, and so it just tells you about some of the powers... Uh, it tells you what happens when she awakens, and then for the basic strategy, it tells you that the basic idea is take control of certain centrally placed cities by first infiltrating them, and then in shadowing them. And then after this, you spread the shadow using a, a ritual, I think is what it is, that's called the Well of Shadow, and it spreads shadow out from a central location. And then you can even turn one of the human nations into a dark empire. Uh, if you manage to in shadow, I believe just their ruler, but maybe a majority of their uh, royalty or, or not royalty, but nobles, nobility. Anyway, so we'll choose that, and I believe the standard world size is 50 by 50. I could be wrong about that, but uh, I watched a big shout out to Das Tactic. I watched uh, a bunch of his videos, and he recommended a smaller map in the beginning, like 28 by 28. So that's what I do, and we'll keep the heroes as they should be. Uh, we're going to be using normal difficulty, and you can use any of these maps right here, or you can get a random seed for your map, and that's probably what I'll do. I'll just type in some numbers. There we go. Now, there are some advanced options over here. There is a 500 turn limit to the game. Uh, you can turn that off if you would like to. Orcs are basically a, a, a third party, if you will, on the map that will cause lots of problems for the humans, so obviously we're leaving that on. And you can get some deep ones coming up from the ocean and taking over coastal cities. And then over here you have the real threat to you, which is the human alliance. Basically, once the world's level of panic rises to a, a high enough level, they will come together and form the alliance and do everything they can to stop you. And uh, 
it's pretty it's pretty intense i'll tell you that uh so you can actually have it so that you can in shadow and infiltrate the alliance uh but what it, the default is is humanity is vigilant the alliance can discover and remove infiltration and in shadowed rulers and so that's what i've used up to this point uh automatically purging shadow that just seems really difficult to deal with and then you can also play with no alliance uh so we're just going to go with this seed here, and we're going to hit start. All right, so there will be these tutorials that pop up. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss them. So this is the map and the UI here. And at first, it might seem a bit overwhelming or underwhelming, depending on your point of view. I assure you, it is very cool. So this is the world that we've got. Um, I'm just taking a general look at, at the layout here. Uh, where we started this... It's not the best situation, but maybe it is actually decent. And I say that because there's not a lot of human settlements here. Uh, most of these hexes, you can zoom in here, by the way, you can see most of these hexes don't have cities on them. You can see under the name it will be city or village or abbey. Uh, there's uh, all kinds of other different places. We start out at the Elder Tomb. Oh, we actually have a witch's coven right next to us. That's interesting. I've never used the witches or tried to turn them to my own purposes before uh so that could be something interesting but yeah so we have these wastes and these cliffs and hills and valleys so yeah it's not it's not settled here and that's a problem in that we want <laughs> human settlements so that we can take them over oh we can also see there's some deep one stuff going on in this city already based on these teeth as you see here so there's a bunch of different uh, overlays if you use the, the number keys. So like one will show you the nations. So we've got one nation here and one there. Uh, we have a, wow, a rather large one here. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you also see holy orders. And they can control cities uh, just like these different kingdoms can. Uh, and, and then here's some orc hordes, uh, two different ones right next to each other. I don't think we have any other orcs, do we? I don't think so. Uh, no, not not that I notice. All right, and if you press two, you'll see profile. Now, profile is a mechanic that tells you how visible you are to humanity, a certain agent. And the higher your profile, the more likely they are to see what it is that you do. And it'll actually light up hexes on the map. Uh, and we'll see that later. And if you press 3, you see International Diplomacy to see who's at war. One of the things you, you'll definitely want to do is turn the different kingdoms against each other. And the different faiths and holy orders as well. Uh, 4 is Infiltration, and that just shows any locations that you have infiltrated with your agents, and we'll see how that works shortly. Uh, awareness uh, is similar to Profile. Uh, but this is, it's not connected, the mechanics aren't connected uh, to your profile. There's always a character called the Chosen One. Well, that's their title, and if they die, someone else will take it, as far as I know. But it's their job to help spread awareness of, of your evil doings. Now, one overlay you'll use a lot is 6, the Modifier Finder. So you can see different things on the map, and we'll go over the important ones as we come to them. And 7 will show you points of interest. Uh, these are all... Uh, interesting in their own way, like if vast sewers, if a city has these sewers and you infiltrate them, you can start spreading a plague from there. Uh, and then libraries help you with getting arcane secrets and allows your uh, mage characters to cast different kinds of spells. Uh, so, things like that. Uh, and then eight, you can find specific heroes. Uh, so you can actually see this, this is an exhaustive list of all the current heroes on the map. And it is a lot of them, but remember, a lot of them will end up fighting each other, so that's good. And then 9 will show you tra trade routes, and F1 will allow you to search by certain traits, which we'll discuss the importance of, as again, as we come to them. And then lastly, you have your preference finder. So each character will have things that they like and things that they dislike, and that will influence their decisions. Alright, so I start with this one character here, the supplicant. This right here tells me that we've leveled up, so we get to choose a trait right at the beginning. And here's the stats. So Might is color-coded. It's kind of an orange or a red. Uh, so any challenges, in other words, things that you can do based on your Might skill will share that color, like this right here, Conscript Ogre. 
And then lore has to do with magic, intrigue has to do with espionage, things like that. And command is the amount of minions that that particular agent can take with him. So if we look at these starting traits for the supplicant, uh, I can gain two power whenever I complete a challenge uh, to enshadow something. And power is up here, it's how you cast your spells. The dying light is actually what I usually start out with. So any settlement that's human that the supplicant visits and stays in for any amount of time uh, will gain 1% in shadowment every turn. And then this one, if your agent gets killed in a human settlement, it will automatically infiltrate all the points of interest. So I'm going to choose the Dying Light. So over here, you can see hit points, sanity. This can be affected, obviously. Uh, profile, as we mentioned, this is how visible your character is. You want to generally keep it down, but what's arguably more important is your menace. Uh, so the menace, the higher it gets, the more motivated the humans are to attack that particular agent. Uh, and different challenges you do will raise them different amounts. Like over here, this is a challenge. It's just uh, the word for the things that you can do when you're in a settlement. Uh, heroes have their own list of things, uh, but I think they're called quests, maybe? Uh, we'll check that in a second. So if you were to do this conscript ogre here, your profile would raise by zero, and your menace would raise by zero. It'd be unaffected. Uh, but it'll tell you how much you're going to gain right there. And complexity shows you the general, or I'd say the relative difficulty. In other words, how long it's going to take you to accomplish this. And that's, as you can see, the complexity is determined primarily by your, your four stats. And it just depends on which type of challenge it is. So it tells you right there, it's going to take me nine turns if I wanted to try this. Of course, that's not what I want to do right now. So generally, you want to look around the map at the beginning and just look for different opportunities, right? Like, if we look at the nation map again, we can see this gargantuan kingdom. That would be a good thing to infiltrate. If you could infiltrate the capital, for instance, and as you zoom out, you'll see a flag by the capital. So this is their capital for this particular place. And obviously, these are the capitals for their respective uh, colors there. So if we click on that, get rid of this. We click on that city. Over here, it's the city of item. And it is indeed the capital of the Kingdom of Item. This is the ruler. He's got his own stats. Uh, his awareness is there, as well as enshadowment, because again, you can in shadow, in other words, corrupt them. And if you get them to 100% shadow, they will no longer try to interfere with anything you do. And even better is certain heroes, once they hit 100%, can actually be recruited as one of your agents, which is fantastic. And they can also carry items, which is what those three boxes are. Uh, and then you see their heir. So you have to be careful. If you're thinking about killing someone, you might want to make sure that their heir isn't worse. So keep that in mind. And then here in the city, you have the population. And the important thing is the population, the minimum, has to be the minimum for food to avoid unrest. So there's 22 population. They have 22 food. That means they're all right. If food drops below the population, it, these will turn red, and you, the unrest in the city will start to rise. So if you're on any settlement or point of interest, you click on modifiers, and you can see anything that's going on. So there's political instability here, uh, but if there's unrest, you'll see it here as well and be able to track it. And yes, there are all kinds of things you can do to generate unrest. All right. So other than that, there's the security stat which is very important this represents how hard it is for you to infiltrate the points of interest here and these are the points of interest so not every settlement is going to have four in fact very few of them do they'll have three or two or even one and in this case this means we would have to infiltrate all four points of interest for this to be 100 percent so security again makes it the higher it is the more difficult it is for you to infiltrate these different POIs. That just means it's going to take more turns and eventually it gets to a point that where the turns, the number is so high, it's just not really feasible. So you have to lower security. And the way you do that is by causing unrest. And there's also different things you can do to lower it based on powers of different agents and things like that. But that the general idea is you want to raise unrest and a really good way to do that, as you might imagine, is choking off the food supply. But you can also spread plague and other things like this. And that's how much money they have. And here's their defense number. 
and these are their local forces uh, that can they can attack you. I, I, I don't know exactly at what point they do, uh, but you can see they're, they're actually going to be right here. Uh, if I switch out of this map mode, click on this, that's the army right there. So you see they have 34 hit points. And there's also a hero here, the mediator. Uh, now, is she the chosen one? I don't think she No, she's not. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so you can see all of her stats as well. And then also over here, you see her motivations. And this is really cool because basically the higher something is on this list here, the more likely that hero is to engage in that activity. So the most, of, or the most apparent thing, I, I can't find the word, but the thing she's definitely going to do is rest and resupply in the city of Arai. All right, and she's less and less likely to do these things as you go down. So you can keep track of how motivated certain heroes are to go after you and your agents. Uh, so back in the city, we have the habitability here. Uh, and just the, the higher it is, the, the more prosperous that certain city or settlement's going to be. And then temperature is just giving you an idea uh, of whether or not it's hot, cold, generally speaking. And again, that can contribute to the habitability score. And this is their faith. If you click on that, it'll take you to the Holy Order screen. And uh, you can actually gain influence here. And the humans will also gain influence. And every time you hit 200 influence, you get to basically influence their tenants, their budget tenants, their moral tenants, structural tenants. So you can exercise lots of control over holy orders and even turn them quite evil, which is nice. Now, this is the chosen one. We can tell by these uh, these arrows here uh, surrounding the portrait. And you can see there it is right there. And so she's going to be our main antagonist. Uh, she's going to go around and do everything she can to stir up humans to you know, stand up against us, uh, which is, you know, I mean, it makes sense. She actually has a might bonus of two. Her might is six. So she does, she does really well when it comes to the might based challenges like these. Uh, it won't take her very long, uh, even if it has a high complexity and her command is eight. Uh, she actually has two minions you can see here and we'll see how combat works eventually. And you can see that right here, this is what she's currently doing. She is on her way to perform this challenge of Defeat Ogre. And uh, so she chose this, it looks like, as opposed to the ones that were higher up on the list. So it's I guess it's not a guarantee that the top one is going to be the first thing they do. That's interesting. Okay, so anyway, as I said, it would be great to take a large nation out, but it's difficult to do, obviously. There's going to be a lot of resistance. Um... But if, let's say we wanted to try to just move immediately on the rulers of this nation. We'd have to figure out, okay, well, if we're going to infiltrate the capital, we got to get their security down. So one thing we could do is look at settlements that are connected, and the lines tell you which ones are. And really, they only have one human settlement that they're directly connected to, this abbey. And let's see, they're not giving this city any food. So it doesn't, I don't think they're importing any food. It would tell us here. It would say 22 plus something. If they were importing food, we could try to infiltrate and or raid militarily with a, an agent called a warlord. We would just basically try to cause problems in this settlement so that they could no longer send the food here and thus start a famine there. But that doesn't look like that's something we could really do. Because they, they have their own food supply is essentially what that boils down to. Uh, but if we look at a more centrally located settlement like this one, they have a security of one. So if it's a village, it's going to have a security of one. Uh, and then cities will have a higher security, like this one has a security of five. Uh, and then, of course, if it's the capital, it automatically gets a plus three. So that one is eight. Uh, and then these different like bastions and abbeys uh, will sometimes, I, I think they'll sometimes be higher than one, pretty sure. But there will be different reasons for whatever level they're currently at. Oh, these are all having securities of one here until we get to another city. All right, so I said I was just going to start playing and then explain things, but that's obviously not what's happening here. So let's just keep going this way. <laughs> uh, okay, so because there's a security of one here, we could infiltrate fairly quickly, and there's only one point of interest, and it is a farming community. So you can see they produce more food than they need. But if we were to infiltrate this community, we could do some damage to that. Um, so 
Of course, we would have to move our agent all the way up there, and it would take however many turns, you know, however many settlements or, or points of it. I, I don't know what you would just call each one of these nodes, I guess. However many nodes it's going to take to get there, that's how many turns. Another thing we could consider is trying to infiltrate a holy order like the Brothers of Faith. Um, and the reason why that could be useful is I don't, I don't see any other holy orders. Except, I guess, the calling of Morant, that's probably a holy order as well. I just I wasn't familiar with it being called, you know, just the calling. That's probably what that is. Uh, it is based at a con. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, if there was only one, if we infiltrated this, uh, most of the kingdoms, if not all, would have to adopt that faith. Uh, but no, there's at least two. And I don't know if new ones are created. I guess they could be. Uh, so anyway, we could choose one of these and hope that this huge kingdom converts to that particular faith, or we could just choose the one they're currently with. Oh, there's actually more. Okay, this is the Church of His, or Hayes. Okay, well, all right, I'm learning things as we go. That's good. So, that's interesting. So if we could get into that Holy Order, that would be very helpful. Uh, but anyway, I think what we might do is just keep things simple and try to enshadow this kingdom over here. This one. And the reason I say that, let's scroll out. This is the kingdom of, uh, I guess you would say, Jing. The reason we would do that is because they're isolated. Right now, there is technically another kingdom here, but they seem extremely weak. Uh, so it will take heroes from this continent a, a little bit of time to get here. I mean, not a lot, not a lot of turns. But in general, they're more isolated, so they're less likely to care, especially in the early game. So what we're going to do is just try to infiltrate and shadow this place. Uh, now, they have a city here. This is not the capital. It has a security of five. And they're right at the baseline for food. And it doesn't say they import it from anywhere, but we can still cause problems there. And uh, so this is empty. The only thing they could, they're really connected to, the only human settlement is this abbey, which has a security of one. So we're going to go to the abbey first. Uh, this city right here is the capital, and it has a security of eight. But this is it, these, these three locations. So we'll take our supplicant here, and I'll right-click to move him to the city. But before I do that, hold on. Actually, I want to see what's going on with the Deep Ones here. So I click on the city, and I go to Modifiers. The Deep One Cult uh, is already kind of established here. It's at 46%. If it gets to 100%, they will turn this into an Abyssal City, and it will no longer belong to this kingdom. And that will cause lots of problems for the humans, but not for us. Um, but here's the consideration. If we take over this empire and we turn it into a, an actual dark empire, it will only have two settlements. And therefore, it just it's not going to be that powerful. So I kind of don't want them to lose this city the deep, to the Deep Ones. Um, but I think we're just going to have to live with it if that happens. Now, the heroes will try to stop the Deep Ones... And we can, I, we may actually be able to try to stop them ourselves, even though you would think that wouldn't happen. Anyway, let's take our supp or supplicant, I was going to say supplement, and right-click. See, that just tells us a little bit about the deep ones, because they're here. Uh, and so I right-clicked, and now my supplicant is here, in this city. And I have zero moves remaining, and you generally have one move per turn. And now, as you see, with my supplicant selected, these are all my challenges that I can attempt. Now, you can see that Infiltrate Docs, the complexity is 175, and it will take an astonishing 44 turns. That's why you want to get security down. All right, remember, this city has a security of 5. And so that's, going, that's what makes this, the complexity so high. But you can see we can act to conceal the Deep Ones, and what that means is lower the Deep Ones profile in Menace so that the heroes don't try to stop them. We can also empower them, and these, by the way, this one takes seven turns, this takes two, uh, and that's these are Intrigue, because as you can see, they're purple, that's the same as the Intrigue stat. And there's other things you could do, try to assassinate the leader, conscript an ogre. Now this is what you generally want when you make a warlord agent, so when we do make one, we'll want to find ogres. Um, and, and there's just a few other things we can do here, and then these are things that we can't do yet. So, what we're going to do is move on to this abbey, 
So I'm going to right click here and it's going to say, now my character is traveling to the Abbey of Qian, or however you say that. But we're obviously going to have to wait till the next turn. So, kind of a last thing for these just blanket explanations. Uh, over here, certain numbers of seals are going to break over time. And that's going to make us more powerful. It's going to give us more power and allow us to recruit more agents. And as you can see, we currently have a cap of two, but we do have two recruitment points. So we could recruit an agent, and then if one dies or we get another agent slot, we'll still have another recruitment point, and these regenerate over time. And this tells you how long until the next breaking of the seal. All right, so let me go ahead and end the turn here. And you'll see we moved over now. And so again, if we look at our challenges, the complexity is lower here. All right, so to infiltrate, and again, there's two points of interest here, a holy site and a catacombs, right? So we need to infiltrate both of them to raise the infiltration of this overall city to 100%. The reason you infiltrate is that it then becomes easier to do all sorts of other challenges. So infiltration is essential, basically. So what I will do is we'll just start with the catacombs. And I'm just going to left click it and you see over here now I'm undertaking this challenge and it's going to take 19 turns. Now something that happens is there are mid challenge obstacles. In other words, scenarios that pop up after a certain, I, I'm assuming random number of turns uh, or a small window of turns. Uh, and, it, and it will offer you chances to either speed up the progress or slow it down. Uh, base, well, we'll see how that works. You'd think, why would you want to slow it down? Well, sometimes you don't have a choice. So we could recruit another agent since we do have an open slot. Uh, and so we have lots to choose from. Generally, what I would pick as my second agent, though, would be this guy right here, the courtier. And so it tells you the courtier is at home in the halls of power. And so he's a manipulator of people specializing in interpersonal relationships. So they're able to turn individuals against one another. Uh, and they can... Another thing they can do specifically to make that happen is they can steal an item from a certain character or hero or ruler and then plant it on somebody else so that they begin to hate each other. Uh, so that's always fun. Uh, but the thing about the, cour the courtier is they have a high intrigue skill just like the supplicant and getting your intrigue started and, and rolling in the early game is always important. Uh, so if you look at the trickster, he also has an intrigue of four but he kind of specializes in slightly different things. Uh, they can do the, some of the same stuff as the courtier. Uh, and they also get a monkey companion, which I haven't really explored the benefits of yet. And then over here, the cursed, you can use these to specifically slow down heroes or disrupt them and get in their way as they try to accomplish different tasks. Uh, the harvester I haven't really used, uh, but they, they can do some interesting things. Uh, they have to consume human souls, so whenever a hero dies in a certain settlement, uh, their soul will be left there, and those can be harvested by the harvester, which will then allow them to, to do certain challenges that have pretty devastating effects. And then you have your generic agents, the Hierophant, the Warlock. This is the, the person that you'll want to do for magic generally, and the Warlord is the person you want for melee combat. And the Warlord is generally used, as far as I can tell, and it's how I use them, to just be a total menace. Uh, you get them as many minions as you can, and you go around raiding villages to cut off food supplies, and you really want the heroes to pay attention to them so that your other agents can be undetected. But right now, we'll start with the courtier. So the courtier has to start in a city. Uh, so I'm going to put him in this deep one city. Again, the security in the capital is eight. It's five over here. So I'm going to choose that and hit select, and then we get to choose their first trait. So you can get a bunch of gold, and you'll need it because you will get blackmailed. Uh, and then there's other situations when you'll need that gold. Uh, this is pretty powerful. Whenever they're in the home location, in other words, the one they spawned in, they lose three security right away. So we could lower the security here to two and speed up our challenge progress. But it, it only applies to that city. If you choose Noble Connections, any city you go to loses one security. And that's generally what I would choose, and that is what I'll choose here. And so if we click here, you can see their security is down to 4, and in the little uh, dialog box there, you see minus 1 due to our Noble Connections trait. So if I click on the courtier again, we can see our challenge options, right? 
Uh, and you can see that this will only take 38 turns for the courtier. He has the same, I think, intrigue stat as our supplicant, right? Yeah. Uh, but because the security has gone down by one, this is no longer 44 turns. Now it's 38. Um, and that's really what we're going to want to start working on. In the beginning, it's it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of time uh, to get things rolling. Uh, but that's not a problem. If I was trying to get the deep ones active here, I would just focus on empowering them, maybe concealing as well. But I really want to focus on infiltration. And now that I think about it, I'm wondering if the courtiers. Efforts would be better spent in the capital simply because I really think the city is going to go the way of the Deep Ones unless some heroes show up to stop it sometime soon. Man, I, I really don't want the Deep Ones here. I want this to be my kingdom eventually. I don't want them to take this. Um, let's just see what happens. We're going to gamble. Uh, I mean, I'm an idiot, you know, so if this is the wrong decision, that that's it's perfectly expected for me. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go with uh, Infiltrate the Docks. And as you see, that'll be 38 turns. And so generally at this point in the beginning, you're going to be ending the turn a lot and just seeing things happen. So over here, you'll get these religious tension uh, announcements. And you can see that the Holy Order brothers have displaced the Church of Hees in the city of Prosu. And you can go to it there uh, or to the, I guess you would say, the, the seat of power for the Holy Order here. Uh... So, all right, so we've advanced a turn. And again, there's just going to be times like this where you're just skipping turns uh, and watching as things happen. Like, here's the chosen one. wonder what they're up to. Oh, that's what I was hoping they were up to. Whoops. Uh, Decimate Deep Ones is pretty high up. And there it is. Oh, no, they're, they're going to defeat an ogre right now. Oh, that's the other. Yeah, but hopefully she'll come back and decimate the Deep Ones. That would be great. I mean, normally we're, we're, we're friends with the Deep Ones, but that would be great in this particular situation. All right, so that's going to be it for this first episode. Uh, again, I did not plan on explaining everything and then starting to play, but that's what happened. Uh, I'm an idiot, what can I say? But in the next episode, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just be playing. Uh, so I, I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if this is something that interests you, stick around. Uh, we'll have plenty more of these... Uh, videos until I get defeated, which is probably what's going to happen. So thank you for hanging out. Please hit like and subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all next time.